As the cost of housing in Boston keeps increasing, so do the city's ambitions for relieving market pressure. In recent months, there have been two notable developments, the surpassing of the mayor's goal for affordable units under permit and a higher level of support for affordable units built or funded by developers. To bring us up to date is the mayor's chief of housing and director of the Department of Neighborhood Development, Sheila Dillon, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Sure. Talk about this change in the formula for the, the number of units that are supported one way or another by developers. You spent a lot of time working on this, and just talk about the size of affordable production that you foresee. Sure. So um, you're right. We did recently change the inclusionary development policy that requires developers to provide some affordable units on-site, off-site, or pay into a fund. So it was a very good process. It went on for some time, but we uh, worked a lot with developers, a lot with the affordable housing advocates, and found a middle ground. We also did independent analyses to look at how much we can extract from private development for affordable housing without chilling the market. Because as our population grows, we need to continue to build housing of all types. So we can't chill the market while we build affordable housing. And one of the other things you have to contend with here is that when you talk about setting aside units, if you're talking about the priciest, hottest part of the city, then a unit is going to cost a lot more money than it would in right. other parts of the city. So how do you get the most for affordability out of that? That's a good point. So one of the recommendations which we adopted was to carve the city up into zones and uh, to require, especially if a developer is cashing out, for them to provide more money in downtown, very, you know, uh, in luxury developments, but outside the city where it's a little bit harder to develop. Outside the uh, outside, downtown Outside, outside the downtown, city here, right, yeah, still yeah. in Boston, where it's harder to develop and the numbers aren't quite as rich, we're extracting less. Um, so we kept the on-site uh, requirement the same. If you want to develop on-site, 13%. But in the downtown zones and then right around the core of downtown, uh, if you want to build off-site or pay, you're, you're, uh, you're required now to do 18% off-site and pay uh, the equivalent of 18% of the units. So um, we're getting more, which is great. Uh, at the same time, though, like I've said, I think we are, we're preserving uh, the ability to develop, to, for developers to develop in Boston. Well, affordability is really a spectrum. Uh, I mean, some of it means, you mm -hmm. know, you can get the government, the federal government to subsidize your rent. And some of it means that, you know, uh, you make more money than a lot of people in, in some of the neighborhoods in the city here. That's right. So the mayor's housing plan that he released in um, the October of 2014 really called for us to develop all types of housing, recognizing that we've got you know, very low income folks here that are making minimum wage and they need to live here comfortably. But we also have a middle class, 34% of our you know, population is middle class, and we don't want them to leave Boston because they can't afford to live here. So we really, the plan calls for, and we're tracking very closely, how we're doing to build housing for everybody. Well, one of the ideas, uh, and this would be in some of these outer uh, neighborhoods that are not quite so hot as far as the market, mm -hmm. And you're talking about raising the ceiling on eligibility for what's considered affordable. And some people say, wait a minute, if you have a Section 8 voucher, you, you still can't afford that. Right. So in, in the IDP plan, we still, we're still using the requirement on the outer, outter neighborhoods, 13% on site at 70% of AMI. So we're, we have, we've kept That's that all the area the, median area income. Area median right? income. Right. We kept that all the same. But we said, if you can prove to uh, the city of Boston through the BRA that you can't make those numbers work, we still want you to build the housing, so we'd allow you to have a slightly higher rent, but you'd have to prove to us that you needed that financially. So it's a pretty high hurdle. Now, talk about what went into reaching that decision, because I mean, one of the things I'm, I'm reading between the lines here is that uh, there are some neighborhoods where the market is still you know, not quite sure, you know, a slam sure. dunk, and, and maybe some developers will say, I won't build there or I won't build as much. Right. And we do, we want to see private development and private investment in every part of the city. So we, that was our motivation. And we, like I mentioned, we hired an independent um, consultant who really looked at development scenarios all throughout the city. Um, and we realized that in some parts of the city, it is hard to build uh, market rate housing. 
And, you know, we want to see market rate housing in every part of the city, as, long, as well as affordable and middle income housing. So we did, we, we really took our time and we really analyzed this carefully before we, you know, changed the policy. Now, uh, one of the things that underlies these requirements is that you have a development that exceeds what's normally allowed by zoning. But you know, right now we're working on a new plan for zoning all over the city, mm -hmm. Boston 2030. And if you get more permissive on the zoning, does that mean you trade away some of the leverage for these affordable units? Well, right, yeah, right now it is tied to getting zoning relief. But where we are, uh, the mayor has wanted to do some really robust planning, uh, Eggleston to Jackson and now in South Boston, Broadway to Andrew. If we change the zoning, and that's the plan, then the inclusionary development requirements, the affordability requirements, will be baked into the, the new zoning. So we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna let it go. Now, one of the things that you can report so far mm -hmm. is that the production, at least the, the permitting of affordable units, is is ahead of pace here. So is that just the market, or, or is there something more making that happen? It's part. I mean, it's part. Last year, um, as we reported, uh, we permitted 1,022 new affordable units, which was a record-breaking number for us, and we were very proud of that. Some of that is tied to the market rate housing, extracting affordable units from the market rate developments. But some of that is we're putting a lot of additional money into building affordable housing. We're moving a lot of our land inventory, and most of that's going towards affordable housing. And last year, you know, we put out on the street about $40 million of city resources to build affordable housing, which is higher than we've done in the past. So it's, uh, you know, all programs, everything we can do to, to make Boston more livable. Uh, one other factor here, and this is not totally in the city's control, but to put in the word for this, because without good public transportation, um, you know, you can't build as many units or you have to provide more off-street parking. That's right. I mean, and most of what's being built right now, and we're very happy about that, uh, is housing very close to transit. So um, the city's in very good conversations with the state, uh, talking about where we're putting our housing and uh, the state's working very hard to, you know, improve uh, the, the transit experience. So we're, we're working, I agree with you. Um, if we're going to meet our population needs, we're gonna have to build by transit and the transit's gonna have to really work and, and, and service our new population. So it's all tied together. Thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. Sheila Dillon, the Mayor's Chief of Housing.